and welcome to your weekly roundup of all the latest news and ramble about the world of electric cars from the team at electrifying.com. So this week, we will be discussing the new Vauxhall Frontera and Grandland, Tesla's on-off on £25,000 car and the new Alfa Romeo Milano. Plus, we're going to be answering your electric car questions, discussing Tom's bargains of the week and dipping into the post bag to find out your views on everything electric. Welcome to the Kilowatt Half Hour. I'm Nicola. And I'm Tom. And that's it. It's just two of us today. That's it. Mm. Because Mike's Mm. on holiday, isn't he? And then Ginny's just so busy. I know. Ginny's like the busiest woman in the land. We attempted to get her on this morning, but we just... Just Gave couldn't up. find the time. Yes, <laughs> she's a busy lady. How are you? I'm all right. I've got a slight cough, so I'll, I'll put on mute if I have to cough up a lung or something. But uh, okay. other than that, I shall battle through. I've got the Lemsips on standby. I'm a bit gutted that you don't have like that sort of sexy, husky voice that most people with a cough have. What are you saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, it sounds lovely all the time anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. I think it's I think it's coming. It's <laughs> just in time for the weekend, I think. <laughs> yeah. And do you know what? The weather's really nice. It's going to be a nice weekend. I know. I'm very exci- I know. I've just T-shirt put my washing on. out. It's very exciting. Yeah. And for us electric car drivers, it means another 20 miles of range when it's nice temperature, isn't it? Yeah. And it also means I can make use of my solar panels. Yes! <laughs> I mean, sometimes when it's a bit cloudy, you'll get a little bit of power come through to them. But on a day like today, I'm like, plug the car in, turn on the dishwasher, do ev- we don't have a storage battery. So as soon as mm. we see the logo come up, we're like, oh my God, plug the car in because we're charging for free. It's all very exciting. <laughs> uh, we digress because I plugged in uh, my BYD Dolphin which is actually oh. version two of the BYD Dolphin that I've had because when it first arrived, so I've now got that as my new long-term car, right? So I've got it for three months. And as soon as it arrived, I went, there's no Apple CarPlay. I don't know how to live without Apple CarPlay. Can't do it. Can't do it. This do- this isn't right. I know it has it. So I'm back and forth with BYD PR team. And they're so lovely. And they're messaging back going, no, it does have it. I'm like, yeah, I know it does, but this doesn't. And they're going, no, it definitely does. Have you tried this? Have you tried that? I'm going, I've tried all the things. I've unplugged, plugged in, done different plugs, tried different cables, tried different phones. And they were going, no, it does. I was like, I'll send you a video. I sent them <laughs> a video. And then we had a FaceTime. <laughs> and then eventually they were like, oh, yeah, maybe there's a software issue. I was like, yeah, I think there is. So they did a little Ooh. switcheroo. So now I'm on version two of the same design version that I've got, the same color as now. I've got the nice blue one. Uh, and I now have CarPlay. Hooray! Yay! Strange, isn't it? All, all car fixes used to be, you know, the car breta doesn't work or there's a rattle from the suspension. And now it's, I need a software update. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, such is the way of the world. I know. We were on FaceTime doing all the software updates and trying to do over the air stuff, and it just wasn't doing it. So they've taken that back to see if they can fix it. If they can't fix it, I'm guessing I'll just keep the second one for the next three months. But I'll tell you what, it... <laughs> It drives nicer than the previous one, which is a weird thing to say. I don't know if the software affects how it drives. I don't have that oh. really an annoying low speed hum that it does on some BYDs. It just doesn't oh. exist. And it seems to be weirdly more efficient, which I found quite strange. Strange. Whether that's strange. The software. not different wheels or anything, same wheels. No, and... Exactly the same car. So I don't know. Hmm. But uh, I think it's just a nice heads up for a lot of people that if a car arrives and it doesn't quite feel right, always go back to them and go, I don't think that's all right. Because if, you know, I spoke to my dad about it and my dad was like, well, I would never notice because my dad doesn't use Apple CarPlay. He was like, so how would I know that there was ever an issue? Well, I suppose you wouldn't, would you? Hmm. But because we review cars, we're kind of on top of it and we know what should be there and what shouldn't be there. So... Interesting. Hmm. Talking of Chinese cars, I've had one on uh, on test this week. Go on. I I have had an Aura Zero Three, the car oh, yeah. previously known as a Funky Cat. Yeah. Well, you see, when 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 they were, do you remember that there were some real real bargains? So they were at one point you could lease one for two years with a hundred and sixty four pound deposit and one hundred and sixty four pound a month. That's insane. And I'm like, yeah, for six thousand miles a year. I'm like, do you know I, that car was never something that. I thought was a class leading, but at that sort of money, I thought that makes sense. And I thought, you know, the lease getting a bit old, maybe I'll do it. 
So I uh, bought one in for a test drive, and uh, uh, Lisa, my wife, loves it. She thinks it's great, and it, it has its failings. There's a, all the safety systems are a bit nannying, and it kind of bleeps at you mm. and does some strange things. But yeah. generally, she thinks it's fantastic. So oh. I looked at the deals and thought, oh, how good are they? All those £164 a month, et cetera, have all disappeared. So the cheapest you can get it now is 229 a month, which isn't quite That's still so pretty good. It's not bad. I think the deposit's a bit bigger. So we'll maybe have a look and see because uh, she's in love with it. Just thinks it's great, which... Oh, well, if Lisa's happy. Looks good. Well, exactly. Yeah. Got to keep her happy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, so have you done like a full written review and stuff that's going to go uh, it, on? I'm going to add to the review because this one that they've sent me is the bigger battery version. So it's, uh, yeah. I think it's the Pro Plus, not the, the Pure Plus is the one with the smaller battery. So it's got a bigger right. battery. It's got a, a 240 mile range, I think. Um, and it, it seems to be pretty good in the efficiency. And after a, a Leaf, which has an 85 mile range, uh, looking down and seeing a, a number beginning with a two fills her with joy. Yeah. You're going to be living your best lives if you go for one of those, even for two hundred and twenty quid a month. Fine. Yeah. The thing is, yeah. it looks it looks like a small car. It looks like it's a mini because of the proportion, uh, well, the styling of it. But then you park it next to something which is small. So we've got a Fiat Panda as well, which is my son's car, and it's just huge. So that car is actually quite wide and is as big as the Leaf easily. Um, but is it just it? appears to be much smaller. Yeah, it's huge. In it's my head, that car. doesn't make sense that it's no. as big as the Leaf. Yeah. Because the Leaf is pretty big. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's a, it's a car that's that size, the same as an ID3 or something. It's, uh, it's oh. weird. Just well, a, we a, a trick of the eye. Well, nice. Well, nice. Mm. Uh, mm. Well, so this week, I uh, went to a very secret uh, filming day at some studios up in uh, Leighton Buzzard. And I got to see for the first time, uh, that's not just photos, the Vauxhall Frontera. Mm. Ooh. And another Vauxhall, which I'm not sure you're allowed to say much about. I think you can Well, say I can tell you it. it's the Grand Land. I can tell you that. <laughs> but I can't tell you anything else, I don't think. No, no. So um, the, the Frontera, yeah, I saw the pictures. Um, yeah. And... It's an interesting, I mean, it's not that interesting to look at. I, don't, I think it looks a bit like the Ford Explorer, but you've seen it in the metal. Yeah. Yeah. But what? I mean, similar to a, yeah, I can see where you've got the Ford Explorer vibe from. It's, yeah. It's very big inside. Really impressed by that. I yeah. mean, it's going to be a, a, a value car, if you will. Mm. So they're trying to aim for sub £30,000. Um, but. To look at and the, the kit and everything inside. I mean, the, the the screens that you've got inside, the seats are really comfortable. And when you sit in the back, I was like, oh, blimey, this is actually really roomy. There's so much room in the boot as well. And from mm. the outside, I, I don't think it's too offensive looking. I think it was it's quite charming. I think it might yeah. do pretty well, actually. Yeah, it's an interesting direction for Vauxhall. Though, isn't it? Everyone seems to be going up market, up market. I have to be posher all the time and... And then Vox will say, actually, we're going to do a car which is good value. It's going to have huge yeah. space in it and is going to be, I, mean, I, I heard under 30,000 euros. So that would make it, well, 27 grand, same as a Mocha. So the Mocha's oh. kind of a bit sportier, posher. Yeah. And the Frontera uh, is more of the, the value proposition, which is great. That's uh, interesting really good. positioning for Vauxhall. Yeah, um, really good. And they're saying around 250 miles range etc yeah. so there is something for the money it's something that worries me about that car though go on is that 111 horsepower mm, yeah it's not the fastest car in the world but look it's not going to be a car that's designed to go fast i'm trying to find the positive i, I know 111 horsepower is like you know you think oh well, that's a first car corsa you <laughs> know if you if you don't want anyone to get themselves into trouble, that's what it is. But in a yeah. car that's that big, if you imagine loading that up with your teenagers and putting loads of stuff on the roof rack and the boot and then heading off to the south of France yeah. very slowly. Which the roof rack we've got to give a shout out to, to be fair. Because that oh, roof yeah, rack it's, can it's hold like two hundred kilograms. It? Yeah, yeah, it's got a, like a proper powerful roof rack. So you yeah. can get like of everything up there as well as everything in the boot as well as everyone in the car so yeah it might be with 111 it might be a tad on the slow side mm, mm. But that's and the fine. grand land grand land you can't talk about but just to say i can't talk about 
Um, I will, uh, if you're watching this rather than listening to this podcast, I will give you uh, a little hint with my face of my thoughts about it. Are you ready? I'm going to do it in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can do. I can't tell you anything else. That's all I'm doing. But now Voxel mm. have, have announced or, you know, they've they've now got their full electric lineup, which they promised. You know, they were like, we're, we're going to have a full electric lineup of everything in our in our uh, all of our models are now going to be electric. And they've done it. They've kept their promise and they've done it. I mean, now the crossland has gone. Frontera steps in and it just goes like Corsa, Mocha, Frontera, Grandland. Mm. They've done well. Mm. I'm mm. impressed. Now, there has been this week another. Stellantis, so that's the, the parent company of Vauxhall, Stellantis product mm. that's been revealed, which uses some of the same bits as the Frontera, I think, but in a very different package. Yes. And that's the Alfa Romeo Milano. We need Mike Milano. to do the Italian accent properly, don't we? Um, Milano. Yeah, so it's a small SUV which uses a lot of the same bits as the uh, Fit 600E and the Jeep Avenger. Mm. But it's... <laughs> There's You're a sporty a ver- well, well, I am. Well, there's there's <laughs> on the plus side. There's a sporty version, so it's got the same uh, 236 horsepower engine that was in the um, a Bath 600e that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The other one's 154 horsepower, which is the same as the Jeep Avenger, which is not the fastest either, but you know, can be all right. And I'm sure it'll have yeah. all that that kind of Alfa Romeo feel, where the steering's very go karty and all that type of thing. And from the side. I think it's a pretty car. The back, so you're not a fan of the grill? The back, I think, is pretty bland. It's not offensive. It's just not that great. The yeah. front, oh dear. Is it, well, they've kept, they've kept that kind of Alfa Romeo triangle vibe at the, at the front. I mean, how could they not? That it has to be put in so that everyone recognises the brand. How but else the could they it, have done it? The, the rest of it looks like it's you know been designed in lego by a 12 year old or <laughs> or it's been in an accident i mean it's just lights all over the place and holes and oh, oh dear no oh. i mean it's aggressive it's kind of yeah but no no oh, it'll be it's meant to be pretty like, it'll be interesting because i've seen obviously we've all seen the pictures because it was all announced and the pictures were revealed this week um, but I'm going out to Italy on on Monday to go and actually see it in the flesh, to see it in the metal. Um, so I'm wondering if I'll feel any different once I see it in person. I'm hoping, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a nice, polite disagreement. You just made mm-hmm. this <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, maybe you will. Maybe in three dimensions it looks a masterpiece. Maybe. I don't mm-hmm. know. Then maybe they just maybe it was just bad lighting for the well, photography. Possibly, possibly. Yeah. Now I have another small car to talk about, and then a big one. Oh, okay, go on then. Well, the small one is a car that's been rumoured for a long time, which is the small, cheaper Tesla, which everybody gets very excited about for understandable yeah. reasons. You know, a twenty-five thousand pound Tesla is a very attractive idea. Mm. And there was a story in Reuters, which is you know a credible source that. Uh, it's not coming anymore because Elon Musk has said we can't make any money. The Chinese have, have got this section of the market nailed. Yeah. Um, and so we reported that uh, this wasn't happening anymore. We, well, we reported that Reuters had reported it. And uh, it went on Twitter, or X as it's now called, and it obviously went on some Tesla forum or something because we've never had such a busy time on the social media so mike who looks after the social media had to uh, <clears throat> turn off the notifications because he was just yeah. tired of the abuse so yeah, who knows if it's true or not um i, I think elon did a kind of a, a something on x with a side eye emoji or something which all the fans took as a a hint that it wasn't true so who knows if it's happening it, or not yeah the way i look at it is to do tesla need to do that i don't think they need to i mean it's they they still sell like hotcakes you know even like the model y was in the top 10 best-selling cars full stop this year Mm -hmm. and they they sell so easily and so quickly that he doesn't even really have to consider doing a budget one at all does he really he can leave that to the chinese brands if he has to yeah I, i think maybe he needs to do something that's a bit more drastic i mean cheap cars 
relatively drastic, but it would be good to see something, you know, it's like the, the iPhone of the car world where mm. it's such a big step forward. You think, whoa, this yeah. is really going to shake things up. Well, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was just a small, cheap car. Well, it'll be interesting to see <clears throat> if they actually do it and how uh, how everything will all be held together really well mm. with such mm. a budget car when we already know that certain Teslas have bad panel caps and all that sort of stuff. I'm mm. not saying bad things about Tesla. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though. I do you know, know what, what I mean. mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so at the other end of the scale, Mercedes EQS has had a bit of a tweak. Mm. And it now has a 118 kilowatt hour battery. That's big. Which gives 511 miles range. Blimey. 511. I mean, all these people, I mean, he couldn't drive from there. Yeah, he could in the yeah. EQS. Yeah. yeah. The question uh, is, would uh, you want to? Well, yeah. Have you driven an EQS? I have. Yeah. Do you want what to know what think? I think about it? Mm. I'm not a mm. fan. No. Is it like the interior is all very nice and like, you know, the, the big giant screen, which I now can't remember the name of. It begins with an M. Giant Ooh. screen. Um, just all looks very nice and it's very nice to sit in and it's all very Mercedes. But to, but to drive, the brakes I find really funny. Like yeah. They kind of, it kind of stops and then stops and then stops and then stops and it's quite an irritating braking yeah, that, process. They haven't got the, I think there's a transition between the regen and the actual physical pads coming in yeah. and they haven't got that quite right. Yeah, and the regen actually puts the pedal down. Yeah. Which is really strange. Yeah. It's a, a very strange car. The thing that I found odd about that car is I expected when I first drove it, it to be like an electric S-Class. Now, S-Classes are so comfortable and soft oh, yeah. and you just drive them around. And you imagine oh, like beautiful. I love having someone in the back. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. And that's how they've been for years. So you think an electric version of that, a bit like a Rolls-Royce Spectre. So you just imagine that that's how the EQS is going to be, a very quiet, luxurious, soft cruiser. And it wasn't, they've tried to make it feel like a kind of a sports car. It, it's, you know, the steering's quite fidgety and yeah. and, and, spot, and it's quite firm riding. And that's not what it should be. So maybe this facelift version will be the opposite. It will be a nice soft car. Maybe they've read my review. Do, <laughs> it, do we yeah. know if they've, if they've done any other updates apart from just updating the batteries? Though? I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have. But uh, okay. I, don't, I don't know what they are yet. We haven't had a go in it. Okay, well, we will see. Time will mm. tell. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Is there anything else before we go on to? Because we had loads of comments on the last podcast. We did. Yeah, let's let's dip into Mike's post bag because we didn't do many last week. So there's a bit of a um, uh, a backlog. So we should okay. probably have a look at the post bag. Right. So we've got a question here from Dave Hardy, who sent a message in. Oh, by the way, you can send us an email, a podcast at electrifying.com. If you've got any questions, throw them towards us and... Tom is always the best person to answer all these questions. <laughs> so, right, here we go. Then this is from Dave. He says, I'm looking to buy a second electric car and I need your advice. We're currently having, uh, we currently have a Polestar 2 as our primary vehicle. We're now considering a Citroen EC4. I'm looking at a one-year-old for about £17,000. Would this be a good choice? EC4, Tom, I know you're a fan. Well, I am a bit of a fan of the EC4. I think it's a really nice car. It's you know, the battery's sensible. Uh, it's got space in it, um, and it rides really well. That's their big thing, isn't it? Citroen Comfort. So it's got big, comfy seats, and and they've softened the suspension a bit, which on the roads around here would be brilliant because it's nearly all potholes. Um, it's the same where I am, yeah. Yeah. So I think it is, and also they are extremely good value when they're a year old. I mean, seventeen grand. That's what twenty grand less than they were new. <laughs> Yeah, about. that's brilliant. So that, that's that's a bit of a bargain. Um, and if you like it, then great. But I would have a go in it first because not everybody likes the way they drive. And also an EC4 was one of the things that I suggested for Lisa, but she thinks it's minging. So, uh, <laughs> was that, so is, that, is that her official quote? Well, when I show her some cars, I say, what do you think of this? This is a... a so I said, I, I suggested maybe a nearly new Leaf uh, or yeah. even a, a new Leaf because the, the Leafs are good value at the moment oh yeah. which reminds me i've got to do bargain of the week um and she just kind of goes don't don't make me don't okay. make me drive one of those okay but so, now she potentially wants an or a funky cat which, which she thinks is exciting and cute yeah 
Yeah. Okay, but 17 grand for a year old car, when you consider it's only a year old, there's going to be no issues there with that car, is it? No, and still, still got plenty of warranty left on it and yeah. all sorts. So you'd be, yeah, I, I would yeah. say that's a, a fine choice. Fine choice. Okay, well, mm. while we remember... Shall I do um, my bargain of the week? Do your bargain of the week, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of the bargains from the last podcast have all disappeared now because I think... Um, uh, car companies work in quarters, so uh, quarters of the year, and oh, yeah. they they have they have to go in and report to their bosses and say, "Look, we did really well this quarter," and so lots of the bargains were in the run up to the end of the first quarter of the year, and they've now hmm. gone. Um, so they'll appear again towards you know, the six month mark. Okay. Um, uh, so a lot of them have disappeared, which is a shame. But I have noticed the Nissan, apart from the Leaf, because they're obviously on run out now because they've stopped making them and they're all from stock. Yeah. Um, somebody's got a load of Arias and they're really cheap. So, um, How cheap? Well, a six months deposit on a two-year deal, lease deal with 6, 8,000 miles a year, 252 quid a month. Now, For an Aria? I know. And it's it's not even the base model. It's the middle um, uh, trim advance. 22 kilowatt charging and uh, the big battery, 87 kilowatt an hour. No. So everybody always asks, where do you see these deals? I'm not affiliated with this company in any way, so it's just what I found. It's Excite Car Leasing, which is Excite, but without the E on the front. Um, they're offering that. Or you That's have... really impressive for for an Aria, which I think we all know is is a cracking car. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice car, two hundred and fifty quid a month. So that's like less than super minis and things. I mean, the, <coughs> excuse me, these will disappear over time. I think. Okay, we'll go and have a look at what was it, Excite Leasing or whatever you said it was. There we go. Uh, oh, let's go right. Let's go officially into the post bag before everyone starts complaining that we haven't done it. Mm. Right. So uh, this is on the subject of the ID Buzz because we spoke about the ID Buzz last week, didn't we? Because we uh, went back to it, saying oh, what mm-hmm. a great car it is. Um, This is from Mike, who says, like Mike, I also looked at the ID Buzz as a commercial van, and the dealer was also pleased to tell me 18 months, which was obviously the wait time back when everyone was looking at it when it was new. Strange how he wants me to visit the showroom now. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Because, I mean, now you could basically just get one in weeks. Yeah. You can get some good deals. Yeah, Mm. I haven't seen seen many about, have you? Is it not? I mean... Maybe it's just where I live or something, but I have. If I see an ID Buzz, it's still like, oh, there's an ID Buzz. Oh, there's two local to me. Uh, there's two. It's all very exciting. I also, oh, I posted it on our WhatsApp group yesterday. Local guy has got a Fisker Ocean. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I literally parked up at the co-op and I went, no, my first yeah. time seeing one in the wild, and it's literally down the road from me. I wanted uh, to go oh. and chat to him about it, but he had a screaming kid in the back, so I ran away. <laughs> I, I did um, do it because, you know, the prices in America have crashed of those cars. So then yeah. you, can, you can buy one new for 20p or something. Uh, so I looked at what, what happened in the UK and looked on, on um, the advertising sites and there were a few. And I think there were like 60 something thousand. And there are still a few people who are advertising them at like 58, hopefully. Okay. And then there are identical cars for 44 which are still there and have been there for a couple of weeks. And you think, oh, those poor people who think they're going to get 58. Yeah, it's just a big old gamble. Just going for Mm. a a company that's pretty much probably most likely going to disappear at some point. So then who's going to help you look after your vehicle? Yeah, I mean, in in some ways you go, oh, great. This is a lovely car and perfect for me. And it's faster than everything else. And then you get it and then say you get a chip in the windscreen. What happens? Mm. Or you need a warranty claim. Then who's got parts? No one's got Mm. parts. Yeah, mm. tricky one, that. Uh, mm. Mark says, oh, back on the buzz. Uh, I think the buzz is a future classic, and I imagine VW will do a longer range one with a more efficient and more powerful motor and battery. It's not going to get more efficient, I don't think, Mark, if I'm honest. It's the it's the, the shape of a, of a building. <laughs> and, and also with that car, you have to heat that enormous space, don't you? So it's, yeah. in winter, <laughs> you're not just heating the small cockpit there or like a small super mini. Yeah. You've got... You've got a warehouse to heat. Yeah. yeah. Although, I mean, when you consider the size of like the EV9, that's way more efficient than the Buzz. Way yeah, the efficient. EV9, I, I, when I was driving it in Scotland and it was cold, I just reached up behind me and turned off the rear heating yeah. and got yeah. another 20 miles. Oh, yeah, see? Uh, Very mm, nice. Mm, uh, mm. Oh, let's keep going. Right, so let's go on to ah, the subject of electric trucks. When mm. does our video go out, by the way? Do you know? Oh, uh, I think it's this week, isn't it? 
I don't know. It might be by the time people you. might be by the time people uh, are listening to this. Oh, okay. Well, keep an eye on our YouTube channel because that video will go out of me and Tom driving some really awesome electric trucks. Um, hmm. So Ian says. Exeter City Council are moving to electric bin lorries. There are three at the moment. The electricity to charge them comes from their own solar farm with battery storage. How good is that? Nice. That's brilliant. And then Rob says, um, electric works for local depot-based vehicles that can recharge overnight. Fine. Long distance just isn't feasible. Feasible. A 45-minute break. Think about how many lorries will need to charge each each service area during that 45-minute period. You need 20 chargers with 100% reliability to get the same throughput as four diesel pumps. So uh, that's 20 megawatts of power needed from the grid. I can see where he's coming from with that. I get it. But we spoke to uh, Jamie at Mercedes and kind of the idea is that when the megawatt charging comes in, you kind of book your slot on a charger to make sure that you do have one that's ready and it should, in theory, work. But obviously, I mean, it depends on how many electric trucks there would be on the go stopping at the same charger. Mm. Oh, I don't know. He's got a point. He has, but I think that people are expecting this. They know what's coming in, in terms of the grid. This is going to be next to a solar farm which will supply some of it. There'll be battery storage for the rest of it. And uh, they are planning this. This um, uh, grid serve near me in Stevenage. They're, uh, they're planning these enormous big wires. And I think it's close to a rail line because there's they've got the, the power already there and they can run big ah. cables down the rail lines yeah. um, so that they can have these enormous, great big cables doing this. Okay. So mm-hmm. totally doable. Doable, totally apparently. doable. Yeah. I mean, what do I know? I'm no, no huge expert in the, the infrastructure, but uh, <laughs> people are thinking about this. Uh, oh, this is uh, regarding LeafGate, Tom, with the issue with the noise that was coming from your mm. leaf. If you want to remind anyone that wasn't listening over the last few episodes, remind everyone what, what was going on with your Okay, so, so my leaf, which is uh, eight years old, uh, has started making a noise. Um, when you get over sort of 30 miles an hour, it sounds like there's a motorbike following you. So it's kind of a, I'll have to do a recording of it. It's yeah. Kind of like, type of noise. Well, we've, um, got, we've, we've got some messages that have come in of people thinking that they've solved it. Well, like, yes, I, th- there are some that I don't like because they sound expensive. Um, <laughs> and there are other ones that I'm going to try first, which are, well, I can check out myself, the tyres. So the rear tyres are on their way out anyway. They've probably got about three mils. So I'll replace those and see if that fixes it. Uh, yeah. Some people have suggested that there's a, um, a loose under tray, which is entirely possible because I did do a bodge on the under tray about five years ago when it got crunched on a curb. Um, oh, well, yeah, that was that's Robert's suggestion. Do you have a loose or flapping under tray? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll have a look at that. Um, it would be strange if it had come adrift after five years, but who knows? A wheel bearing is a possibility, and I'll be happy to have a go at that myself. So I'll jack it up while I'm doing the tyres and. Uh, see if it's that but i don't think it is because it passed an mot and had a service and was fine okay uh so but the other ones sound far too expensive so i don't want to think about those <laughs> okay which just sounds a bit like there are people emotionally invested in what's going in, on underneath in what's your going on yeah yeah <laughs> at, at the moment i'm just hoping it goes away oh there yeah. was somebody who suggested that it's the uh, parking brake which i think is very likely as well oh because that is a thing with old Leafs is the parking brake, which is a, you know, it's a foot operated handbrake yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, they kind of get gunk in them and corroded and stick on and squeak when you reverse. So if you uh, hear a squeaking in a car park, it's probably a leaf reversing out of a space. Um, and I've had them done twice on, on my car because we park it on a slope and I think all the water goes down into it and it corrodes. So Ah. I'm going to take that off, give that a bit of a grease as well and hope that that fixes it. So I'll keep you all informed. Yes. We we want full weekly updates. Thanks, Tom. (laughs) Um, So then we've got a couple of insurance questions. I'm fully realizing we're already reaching half an hour. This is Mm -hmm. crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, This is from Peter, who says, just renewed my insurance uh, for my 2023 Nero EV4 for the second year. Uh, Same details as previous year, auto renewal quote, was up by £130. Searched the market and got the same cover for 80 quid less than current year's quote, thus saving £210 on an automatic renewal. Yeah. 
Automatic yeah, renewals that... are just com- like I, every year I would do. I do the same thing every year. I get my automatic renewal. Then I phone them up and I go, well, come on then. Let's bring it back down because we all know it, that's ridiculous. And um, when I had my I had my Kia Sportage, the hybrid Kia Sportage, they doubled it on my auto renewal. And I phoned them up and I went, come on then, let's lower it. And then they couldn't. They just couldn't do it for the first time in like 15 years that I've phoned them up every year. Mm. And they couldn't lower it. And I neither of us could figure out why. They were like, oh, it's obviously maybe there's been issues around your area with that particular car. I was like, it doesn't make sense. And I phoned around and we still couldn't get the price down. So mm. it ended up being very expensive. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's sometimes the way, isn't it? You get outraged thinking it's going to be much cheaper if I uh, go and haggle with somebody else. And it's not. That auto renewal is actually the best price. It's slightly depressing, isn't it? Because we've all yeah. got into this routine of thinking that you just have to not auto renew and go somewhere else for a better deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, Mark says the first thing is to be very mindful of the renewal date because all of these companies jack up the price in the knowledge that people live busy lives and the auto renew uh, basis of the insurance means many expensive policies just get paid. I was watching, I think it was um, Martin Lewis Mm. um, because he did a show with Ginny, didn't he, Mm. on Mm. ITV? And it was Martin Lewis talking about the best time to renew your car. And I believe... Oh no, I'm good. I might get it wrong. I thought he said it was like 30, 32 days or something was it, was before it 21 you renewal. or something. Is it twenty one? <laughs> Possibly. I, I can't wrong. remember either. Watch Ginny's. I'm gonna program. have to go and find that video. <laughs> yeah. It was on Instagram, I know that. And he, he posted it on Instagram saying this is the mm. best time to renew it. So if you follow Martin Lewis, then just go and find it and don't take mm. our word for it, because that was really bad advice from me and you just there completely getting wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a long time, isn't it? Because they think that you're a better organised person. If you're a better organised person, then you're a better insurance risk. You're not one of these people who's constantly herring around trying to rush to do things because then yeah. you're more likely to be distracted and have a crash, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's all the algorithms. All the algorithms. Uh, oh, um, so Phil says, this is quite interesting. So this is the last one because I realise we're running out of time, right? Mm-hmm. Phil says, here in France, oh, bonjour. Here in France, it's the car that's insured, not the driver. This covers all drivers over 25. And our insurance for our Smart 4.2 uh, has gone down each year. So you don't, it's not the driver that's insured, it's the car itself. So it means that... I guess you can then just lend your car to whoever you need to and the car is covered. Which I suppose makes sense. Yeah. But then who would be... No, because then surely if someone then takes my car and takes it out and then has a crash, does that put the insurance up on my car and not on that particular person, even though I wasn't driving? Yeah, because you're the one who's... That car has been lent to somebody risky. So then it's my responsibility for yeah. who I lend my car to. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder if that what's would be to stop better, you kind of what's to stop you just saying, right, well that car's now tainted with a crash, so I'm gonna sell it and buy something else. Or you buy a car and then that's previously been driven by somebody yeah. dodgy. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that affects insurance. I don't know. That's a very interesting hmm. different way of doing things in France. Hmm. I hope the weather's hmm. nice down there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going there soon. I'm going down to Nice to go and have a look at the um the oh my god, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute because I know because me and Manos have been really excited about it. So we are going to have a look around the new Cadillac Lyric EV. <laughs> oh yeah, this is interesting, isn't it? Because I was yeah. like Cadillac, Cadillac, who cares? Yeah. And then it's coming to the UK. Yeah. Yeah. So me and Manos are off to France, the south of France, in a couple of weeks to go and have a look at it. And we've both texting each other going, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I don't, I don't know. Would, would people be interested? I mean, there is a certain demographic. I think you like Cadillacs because they're Elvis fans or whatever. But uh, would anybody else think a Cadillac's a good alternative to a Mercedes or a BMW or something? I don't Let know. Let us know. Let us know. I will. Yeah. Going, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I go. When do I go? Hold on. I go on the 25th of April. So a couple of weeks time. There we go. It's nice. 
Yeah. Um, we've gone we over time wrap up. As, is, yes. yeah, yeah. as is tradition. But look, if you have any other questions or anything that you want to talk about, anything that's going on with your EV or something that you're considering purchasing, or if you just wanted to comment on anything that we spoke about today, then pop it in the comment section below if you're watching on YouTube. If you are listening, wherever you are, leave us a lovely little review because it's really good for us on the algorithm, isn't it, Tom? It is. <laughs> Makes more people find us. Yes. Uh, and also on social media, we just find us electrifying.com. You'll find us everywhere on Instagram and Twitter slash X, etc. And give us a follow and you'll see all of our updates there. Lovely. And we will see you next week. See ya. Lovely. Bye. Bye.